Hey yo, welcome back to another episode of Azazi Se5 Sanzane Rap. My name is Mukuzaim Labo and here with one important question. Has there been an artist in the history of Zimbabwean hip-hop who has been as consistent, skillful, fluid, and amazing at features than the one and only Soko Matamai? I don't know man, you let me know But it really got me thinking As I was going through my uh, playlist, my catalogue And just listening to uh, Zimbabwean hip hop tracks And I figured out that one of the most consistent themes Throughout the tracks that I love listening to uh, Have featured Soko Matamai And it's been him as a featuring artist on those records which is crazy because i feel like he's one of those artists that um who is underrated uh, when it comes to their catalog i mean this guy came out one album of the year in his rookie year with uh, his debut album soko matamai and then the follow-up album as well the sophomore album uh, take back the land critically acclaimed as well now those are consistent strong body bodies of work that you know have resisted the death how do you say this <laughs> that ha that have stood the test of time i was about to say the, the death of time time doesn't die uh, but they've they've resisted um you know time passing and they, they've looked healthier they still sound incredible and you can still play them back i mean some records might sound a little bit dated but still the point still stands like this is not an artist who's just like okay it's just good with the features but you do see that somehow somehow it seems as if like the skill is taken to uh an extra level when it comes to features and i don't i don't know what it is it's, it's almost like uh, it's almost like real madrid in the champions league you know like in the league they can be great they can be good and they've won titles before but it's just that when when that when that these are the champions hits then all of a sudden we're talking like a different ball game, which is which is really really crazy. But like I'm I'm so, super super impressed, man, because uh, I don't think I've ever heard, or maybe I have to run it back, but I don't think I've ever heard a bad Sokoma to my verse, a bad Sokoma to my verse featured on another artist's song. Like it just always seems super motivated when it comes to that, and I find that absolutely uh incredible and what i love about it in those verses uh, that it features is that you can tell that this dude loves to rap and i've said this before like on uh other episodes of first of the month i've always said that it, you can always tell that the soko loves to rap now i don't know what it is but like you feel it you feel it and when you listen to it as a fan you almost feel like oh man I think I can rap too. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think I can rap too and I want to rap too. You know what I mean? You kind of get like a little, um, you get you get motivated just a little bit, even if it doesn't go anywhere. And not only that as well, I think he's also one of those artists that are proficient uh, in interchanging between flows, especially his use of, uh, you know, the duality of the languages that he knows. So like you have Shona in English and the verse will be so consistent, structured, the fiery, and it will still um, sound consistent while being rapped in two different languages. And very, 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 and I say this very carefully because very, very, very few artists are able to do that. You know, it's a very, very few artists that are able to do that. You know, I think Holy Ten is one of those uh, artists as well who can uh, interchange between uh, languages and I've heard as well some of my favorite artists who can do that uh, Jay Dooms I can do that uh, Kuluva7 is one of those artists can do that uh, K Breezy uh, as well like people who who are flawless with the flow uh, that they they can interchange between languages and like it's really cool uh, to see and um, I just want to talk about some of my favorite verses um, from Soko Matemai and like this guy has given us and I'm gonna leave out a lot obviously um, but like whew, it's, it's incredible like 
think of like the team, you know, team borders. So it's like back in 2013, 14, incredible stuff. You look at uh, Sango with Chris Newton, you look at King, you look at Zaya, you look at the Pungwe sessions, you look at uh, Level Up, you look at Playback, you look at. Um, What's my favorite verse right now? Neria. You look at Neria and you're like, Ooh, wow. Like, if if you were to listen to this guy, like straight from the features, you're like, this is the greatest rapper of all time. <laughs> you're like, this is the greatest Zimbabwean rapper of all time <laughs> by listening to features alone, <laughs> which is crazy. Which is crazy because it almost feels like it does it. It does a disservice uh, to his solo body of work, but still, even his body, his solo body of work, is incredible. Which also means. I still want to hear the album, but still, like, I listen to all of what he does, and I'm super, super, super impressed. And I absolutely love it. So this is this is my ode. This is my flowers. This is my flowers episode um, to one of the greatest to ever do it. Top five, top ten, wherever you want to put him. Top two, not one, whatever you want to put him. So come to my is that dude. And if you it's your first time watching this video and you want to find out about Zimbabwean hip hop, I would highly, highly recommend as that as a good starting point um, to go to and. That's it. That's it for me, man. With that being said, I told you guys I'm going to try to be a little bit more consistent with the videos. Right. With that being said, I've been Mugu Zemblambo. This is Mizasa 5. Catch you on the next one.